Reports are emerging today of yet more women being imprisoned at Colchester Castle. Thanks to the detective work of Matthew Hopkins and his hard-working staff in locating as many witches as possible to ensure the residents of Essex are free from the devastating effects of bewitchment and devil worship in their communities. However, our investigative reporter has found evidence of previous crimes of witchcraft in the form of never-seen-before footage. We present them to you as a salutary reminder that witchcraft is, regretfully, not a new phenomenon in the county of Essex. Tonight in our special report, Essex, an evil county. I'm here in the picturesque village of St Osyth, which is the setting of the discovery of no less than 14 witches. Earlier today I had exclusive interviews with the victims of this heinous crime. And now, to Grace Thurlow, the woman whose accusations of Ursula Kemp kicked off all the sordid witch trials in St Osyth which seem to be growing day by day due to the investigations of village magistrate Brian Darcy. What happened to your children, Mrs Thurlow? Well, my Davy is very ill, but Ursula came to see him and then after a few visits he was feeling much better. I don't know how she cured him, but after visiting him his hands had been turned backwards, you know, sort of like this. What happened to your other child? Well, nine months ago, soon after my daughter Grace was born, Ursula fell out with me because I wouldn't let her nurse her while I worked. Then, and then a few months later, when I was looking after her, she fell out of the cradle and died. She broke her neck. Were there any other significant occurrences? Um, yes, about six months ago, I think. I began to go lame, especially in my legs. The nurse came over, quite unexpectedly, and said she would help me if I gave her some money. Of course, I promised her that I would, and then in five weeks I was feeling a lot better. But when Ursula came back for the money, I just couldn't give it to her. I couldn't afford it for that time. But then she asked, I think, for some cheese instead. But I didn't have any of that either. So what did Ursula do? She made me lame again, and I have been ever since. But when I feel any better, then my poor Davy gets ill. And when he's better, I become lame again. There we have it, the harrowing story of Grace Thurlow. We're here at the new house of Thomas Rabbit, son of Ursula Kemp, who recently gave testimony against her. Thomas, how did you know your mother was a witch? I saw her feeding her spirits beer and cake late at night. What can you tell us about these spirits? Their names are Tiffin, Titty, Piggin and Jack. Is there anything else you can tell us about these spirits? I know that mother let Miss Newman borrow them. And what did she do with them? She sent them to kill Miss, Mr. Johnson. Thank you very much, Thomas. We're here in the house of William Byatt, yet another victim of the accused Elizabeth Bennett. Mr. Byatt, how did you know Elizabeth Bennett? We was neighbours. Her and her husband lived right next door to me and the missus. Past three years or so, I reckon. And how did you get on with Mrs. Bennett? Well, it's a funny thing. First year was fine. Got on like a house on fire. But then after the second year, she got these pigs and cows and they kept coming over our yard and my missus got the um. She kept shooing them away and Mrs. Byatt got really rude about it. So my missus got a big old stick and kept shooing them back. And again she was rude about it, but they're big old beasts. But Mrs. Bennett said last Lammas Day you called her an old witch, a, a whore and an old trout. What do you say to that? Too right I did. She vexed my cow. That was proper ill and lame. Wouldn't eat or move or stand. I just thought it was so ill I was going to take an axe to it, put it out of his misery, poor old bugger. So me and the boys decided we'd light a fire and cook some up after I put an axe to it. But the funny thing was, as soon as that saw the flames, that stood up and ran away, and that was as right as rain ever since. I told John Tender and I reckon she vexed it. And do you have any other evidence against her for witchcraft? No, not really. I don't see her much these days because my hips are gone. 
don't get out of the house much these days and the doctors don't know what it is. Thank you very much, Mr. Byatt. Mrs. Johnson, can you tell us a little about your husband? Tell us about his job. Uh, he was a cloth maker here in the village, but he was also serving out his year as the parish overseer. And can you tell us a little bit more about that job, what it entailed? It mainly had to collect the arms from all the people in the village and then he would keep it safe and then when people fell on hard times or they needed something, they would come to him and he would try and help them if he could with the money that he collected. So it would be fair to say your husband was a man of high standing within the village? Well, it was a job that everybody takes a turn on but yeah, he did enjoy it and he had been asked to do it again, it wasn't his first time. Yeah, he liked helping people. And what, what happened between your husband and the accused, Alice Newman? Well, Alice's husband, William, had fallen ill and hadn't been able to work for a while. So Alice came to my husband and asked him for some money, about 12 pence I think she wanted. But he, he couldn't give it to her, he just didn't have it. The problem is, is he was always very generous with it and he'd given out more money than he'd collected so he actually didn't have it to give to her. If he'd given her any, then it would have had to come out of our own money and then me and the little ones would have had to go without. So he didn't want to, but he had to tell her no. And then what happened next? What happened to your husband? He just died. She must have cursed him. It was... He was such a good man. She didn't need to do that. You know, if, if he'd had the money, he would have given it to her. He really would. And now she's left me without him. The little ones keep asking where their dad is. Excuse me, I have to go. I'm standing here with two of the daughters of the accused, Alice Hunt. Phoebe, what can you tell me about your mother's familiars? She told me not to tell anyone. She did have two familiars. They were little horses, really, and one was white and one was black. And she kept them in a little, little pot, like that big, or something like And how did she feed them? I think it was milk, wasn't it? Yeah, from a dish. Mm. Yeah. And what about these familiars now? Do you know anything about them? Do you know where they are now? Yeah, I heard my mother telling them to go to Daywood of Frowick. Yeah, I don't know what happened after that. Thank you very much. To help us understand these witch trials, we have Dr. Cowter to join us. So Dr. Cowter, what can you tell us about the Matthew Hopkins and these witch trials? Well, well, of course, with um, what's this going on in the country at the moment and um, the state of things with the Civil War, I mean, Matthew Hopkins has taken it upon himself to um, go out and find these witches. Now, this is not the first time that a large coven of witches has been uh, discovered in this country. Um, Essex is not alone in this, as the uh, Pendle Forest witches of 1612 proves. But the Sinosive trial we have just been looking at was not during the Civil War. How do you explain that? No, no, no indeed. But I mean, in the case of the St. Osif trials now, that particular generation had on, undergone um, a religious reformation. Now their religion and in fact their entire way of life had been called into question. Now in, in those sort of circumstances, the, the idea that um, accusations, suspicions could be aroused from things that could be deemed unnatural, well. Let me ask you about witch trials altogether then. Recently witch trials have been declining, so why this now? Yes, yes, very good point. In fact, um, witchcraft trials, trials have um, massively de declined, in fact, and, and yet these could actually be the largest ever, which is very interesting. Now, Matthew Hopkins, our witch finder general, um, he is actively seeking these witches, and, um, and in fact, uh, he has a book being published, uh, Discovery of Witches, um, next year. Now, probably best were he to find some. So can you explain the differences between the St. Osif trials and the current trials being brought forth by Hopkins? Yes, yes, yes. Well, of course, in the case of the St. Osif trials, now there, now my colleagues in the field, um, Malcolm Gaskill and um, Jim Sharp, they would put that down to being the functionalism, functionalism model. Now, um, whereas 
rivalries and disagreements between um, family members could in fact lead to accusations. Now, whereas Christine Lana would explain the, um, the current trials as being more of your social control model, where in fact accusations, um, well, they actually come from the top, top down, and um, in this instance from Matthew Hopkins. This is a very interesting insight, Dr. Counter. Thank you for coming in. You are welcome.